Hi everyone, today I'm going to be sharing my coming out story with you for the first time ever. I'm going to be telling you how I grew up. I'm going to be telling you how I grappled with my sexuality, how I overcame my challenges to be where I am today. So check this video out. It's so nice to see you. I'm so excited today. I'm going to be telling you a bit about my personal story. As always, I would love if you click subscribe because I'm going to be probably doing my story in parts. So click the button and you won't miss the next part. So my name is Mark. I grew up in... Um, place called Hertfordshire, just north of London in the UK. And for the most part, I had a pretty normal, pretty privileged childhood, I guess. I was never like super wealthy or anything, but never super poor. Uh, I had kind of loving parents. I had two brothers and we lived in a little kind of town. And uh, for the most part, I had a happy childhood. I generally enjoyed school and friends and I remember just thinking for my kind of primary school years kind of the first eight or nine years of my life the world made sense right so I would play I would go to school I would do all the normal little boy things and things were enjoyable when bad things would happen, I'd be like, okay, yep, I get that. When good things would happen, I'd be like, okay, yeah, I get that. It all just kind of made sense. And the things that I liked, the things that I thought, the things that I perceived in the world around me all kind of were mirrored in the other kids uh, around me. They were mirrored in my parents. They were mirrored, you know, what I was being taught in school. And I just had this sense that, okay, I'm safe, I'm fine, I, I get this world, <laughs> we can do this. And then, about the age of eight years old, everything changed. As if overnight, I started to sense that the other kids in school were changing and no longer did they want to play the games that I wanted to play. Cops and robbers, pirates, dragons, knights and spaceships and aliens, creative games like that. The other boys wanted to play football or soccer if you're in America. Every playtime, every recess, they would go out and they would play soccer. And I didn't understand it. We had had so much fun playing all kinds of games like tree houses and obstacle courses and animals and aliens and we, we would be so creative, we would have such a good time. And now, as if by magic, whenever I suggested playing in the way that I wanted to play, they would kind of look at me like I was really weird. They would look at me like I was an embarrassment to them. And I didn't understand what was going on because only a moment ago we, we were little boys playing like like this is what we do we have fun like wh what what's changed like did I miss something <laughs> did, did I miss the note on this like why does everyone want to play f football all of a sudden and so 
started to get really confused. And this was the beginning of a lifetime of confusion. <laughs> um, they say that bisexuals are confused. <laughs> I was confused at that point. And it wasn't just in the games that we played. As time went on, almost everything about me and everything that I liked, everything that I did, everything that I said, seemed to be met with this hostility from the other boys who had been my friends only a few months previous. And they wanted to play computer games and they wanted to hang around and talk about the girls. And I didn't understand what was so interesting about the girls. We never talked about the girls. Girls were boring. <laughs> uh, but now they were the most interesting thing ever. The way that they moved, the way that they spoke, the words that they used, the way they held themselves and carried themselves, it all started to change. And I looked at myself and I, I didn't know how to fit in with that. Every time I spoke, they would look at me like, mm. every time I suggested something, they'd be like, mm, no. They gave me this energy of like, go away. Like you're embarrassing us. Like you're not part of this. And I was eight years old. <laughs> to say that this was traumatizing and confusing is an understatement. My whole world just crumbled around me. My whole sense of who I was, my whole sense of where I fitted in the world was completely shattered and I found myself isolated and alone by myself in the playground, by myself, you know, even at home, you know, I had two brothers who I love very much, but they were kind of like that as well. Like they didn't, they didn't really want to do what I wanted to do. It was very like, you know, weird. And so I looked at the adults around me and they did the same. Slowly but surely, the things that I was kind of celebrated for or encouraged for started to be looked down on. So they're like, oh, you know, stop being so playful or stop being so excitable, stop being so imaginative stop being so flamboyant they started calling it like these kind of negative names like you're being girly or you're you're being a sissy or you're you're being not manly and and things like that so all i could glean was obviously like we were okay preparing to grow into manhood okay so there was this thing called manhood which they had all been obviously taught or shown or known how to be but I wasn't it was like I was missing a piece of the jigsaw it was like you know when you have that day where maybe you're off sick from school and they learn something um that then for the rest of the the year you've missed <laughs> I was like did I miss a lesson on this um And I just had this feeling like something about me is not right. Something about me is weird. Something about me is not liked. Something about me is wrong. 
but I don't know what it is and I don't know what to do about it. And I kind of, I kind of went over to the girls and some of them were a bit less hostile. They're a bit kind of gentler, but I didn't understand the girls either. I very much wasn't one of them either. So I was like, hmm, this is weird. Um, so this was the start of my story. It was a very, very difficult time. And it was something that I know a lot of us go through. Um, but this is part one of my story. Stay tuned because I'm going to be making part two very soon and I will tell you how I managed with this, how this affected me and how I grew up through secondary school or high school. Anyway, thank you for listening to my story. If you relate to it, please comment or if someone else would benefit from it, please share and I will look forward to continuing the story with you soon. <laughs> Bye for now.